Hi, Caroline Carney here at Palais Arts with uh, Daniel Char in front of his beautiful painting that will be in our jury show later this month. Dan, would you like to introduce your piece? Yes, uh, the title of this painting is Puddle and Stubble. Uh, there's a puddle in the foreground, which I use to advantage to uh, pick up on some of the colors in the sky, the blue and part of the clouds. Uh, the painting itself was chosen for that reason. Uh, Frank Stella talked a lot about the concept of pictoriality, of having every section of the painting being like a little picture. And so my approach is to provide visual entertainment throughout the image. So there is, aren't dead areas. So you can see as you follow around the image that there's something going on pretty much throughout the image. And uh, with this one, uh, there was, it's kind of a simple image and I didn't try to do too much with it because of its size. Uh, so uh, the concept of the hill and something beyond the hill is intrigued me. And so there's a, within that, there's a kind of mystery uh, about the work. And that's an important element that, that painting should have, I think, at least for me, is that there's this element of, of intrigue, that there's something that continues to stir in the work that compels you to come back to it over and over again. If you consume the image, you see it, and, and you're done with it, that's not a good thing. Uh, for me, I want the constant uh, act, uh, constant interest going on with the work. So you can't really see what's beyond the hill. And so there's there's a bit of mystery wondering what's behind beyond that. So obviously the color harmony is big. The orange and blue is strong in this, and then that holds it together. And, uh, and there's a lot of detail in it, the stubble, the corn stubble, mm -hmm. as a title I use a lot because I paint a lot of cornfields. <laughs> uh, so here you can see the highlights, and of course having the shadows uh, adds some focus on, the, on what's over the hill. Yeah, and really draws your eye to this line of blue with the orange that does take you over the hill. Yes, and if you look at the color, <laughs> there is a strip of blue right above the orange. So. That's one of the things that Van Gogh would do, would put complementary colors next to one another as they trigger each other, the blue making the orange brighter and the orange making the blue brighter. And so you see even the clouds are orange, mm -hmm. uh, have an orange tint to them. So the orange blue thing is carried throughout. And you see in the composition of the clouds how the movement goes this way. If you, re if you showed a reverse image of this painting, it would look chaotic. It would fall apart because it very much depends on moving in this circular uh, clockwise direction. Yeah, where direction. you bring the eye in. Yeah, which, you know, which is the way that we read things, yeah. after all. So uh, there's a lot of detail in the image. and uh, But if you look at the detail, you'll see that it's not really accurate. It's not. I'm not really painting blades of grass the way they appear. What I'm doing is painting patterns that stand for grass. Patterns that stand for corn, and even the cloud patterns, or they stand for cloud patterns. So it's not a matter of being realistic. It's a matter of using a vocabulary yeah. that, that stands for and carries the idea of the landscape. And that we associate, that our brains naturally associate through the way we process our visual vocabulary. The pattern, right. Yeah. Right. So your lines are so clean and precise the way that, and it makes so much sense that you say you um, divide out so that there's little pictures within the larger picture. Um, I'm always impressed at like it's this work is so small and yet so precise, including even your little tiny name on it. Uh, I it. Um, and uh, I uh, I believe you said you were inspired by 19th century. Yeah, 19th century photography, which of course photography is uncompromising with its detail. Uh, so and, and so the edges of things and like with uh, Bierstadt's photographs of canyons okay, and so yeah. and there's a there's a sense of it all being there mm -hmm. and 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 you can't really understand how those little details that are almost imperceptible help communicate the idea of the landscape yeah and communicate the volume in the space space of course this takes you over the hill which yeah. 
suggest a space beyond the hill. Yeah, you're creating great dimension. But it is very much about volume, about space working this way and space working in and out. Yeah. Uh, so I, I developed this technique in college working with opaque tempera. Okay, which is, yeah. Which is a watercolor, uh, opaque watercolor, and, mm -hmm. and you work with it in a creamy-like fashion. Yeah. And you can. the neat thing about it is that because it's temporary, you can re-moisten it yeah. and do some mixing in with it. But it's not that permanent. If it gets thick, it cracks and so on. Yeah. So when acrylic came out, uh, <laughs> this was meant a long time ago, <laughs> uh, then I applied that same technique. Mm -hmm. And so I start the images out like a watercolor, using washes and, and gotcha. gradually build it up. And there's a lot of layering that takes place. Yeah. And then there's a lot of, of, of washes that I put on the painting and then smear it with my hands and actually use my fingerprints to create little <laughs> simulate patterns in there that rather than having a, there's no areas in this that are flat. Yeah. Everything has visual activity in it. And again, that, that activity is, is pretty much imperceptible, a lot of it, mm -hmm. when you look closely at it. But the, the key for the good small painting mm -hmm. is that when you enlarge it, it looks like a big painting. Yeah. It, it can be carried like a big painting. Yeah, because took, it has, if, still if, has a visual interest. Yeah, if you took a slide of it mm -hmm. and then projected on a wall, I would be satisfied if the person wasn't aware that it was a small painting. And, well, and that requires... A real attention to the edges and details. Yeah. Because if you take the normal small painting and enlarge it, it falls apart. It looks very crude. Yeah, because it doesn't have enough visual interest to draw your eye around the well, once also, it gets larger. It's also the tightness of yes. the way that, yes. with, that the Thank shapes you. That's are. That's a better way to describe it. That, that there's, a, there's a tightness, an uncompromising tightness about the way things look in terms of the planes. So that, that, uh, the, that tightness is, I, I, I was inspired by a painting I saw in the Hermitage Museum in St. Petersburg. Okay. And it was a, it was a mother and child painting by Da Vinci. Okay, it was, yeah. It was about that, but that big. Mm -hmm. And uh, anyway, it was like a jewel. You okay. know, when you looked at it, every part of it, it just was, the intricacy of it was so... Yeah. It was infinitely large in its smallness. You know, there was. A, I love how you said that. Yeah, there's a, 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 a strangeness about it. There's a it. whole world living within the piece. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, in its smallness, it's large. Yeah. And that becomes a metaphor for life, too. When we look at, <laughs> when we look at the small things of life, we see, can see the bigger things. That's right. Your life is comprised so, uh, of lots of small things that make big events. Yeah, so I do small paintings now because. I like that jewel-like quality, and I, and I'm shooting to make it more refined and more refined. So, well, this is gorgeous and very refined, and I love it. And we hope that you'll come see it uh, during our Juried show, which opens March 17th at Palais Arts. Thank you so much.